Friday night should make guys just make strictly skills cut. What should I say? Quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. <laughs> Yo, we got the big homie in the building, Tory Lanez. What's good with you, Lanez? What's going on, boss? How you been? I'm incredible, dog. I'm on top yeah. of the rising. Yeah, you know, um, I'm looking around. We we are in the palace. I'm a little I'm a little tight with you before we start this. I'm a little what mad. I, I see the hardware on the on the wall. I don't have none of that hardware on the wall. <laughs> what, what's, what's going on? Like, you know I what I mean? Wanted, I just wanted to decorate my crib mm. a little bit differently. Nah, it looks so, good. It looks good, man. You know. Hey, want to definitely let's start off. I definitely want to say, man, congratulations Thank to you and your work, Chris Brown. Thank singles, you. the singles popping. You know, I'm 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 making a a vizuvi out of it. Thank you. Now, how did that, that whole thing come about? Like, it was actually crazy. We um, I took a trip to Mexico, uh, randomly, and Chris ended up being out there and was like, "Yo, I'm here too." And I was like, "Oh, nah, we locking in." We ended up locking in for a good three, four days. We came out with the record. And a couple other records, but once we heard the record, we knew it was just instant classic. Like yeah, it's one wondering. of those songs that just feels good, like you know, mm -hmm. feels like R and B, you know. So I was, I was gonna say, damn, you had to go all the way to Mexico get a, a feature? Nah, nah, nah. We was I mean, you, I mean, I mean, you've traveled everywhere I go though. The studio's with me. So, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Mike is with me. Super Saiyan Mike be with me every time we travel. The, the studio's right there, so. If he's there, he can come and record in mine, and usually he the same way, so he usually got the studio with him wherever he's at, too, so. Right, 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 yeah. right. Uh, shout out to, to the Umbrella situation, Umbrella Records. Thank you, thank so we, we gotta talk about that. We gotta talk about sure. who's coming out on the label, and we gotta talk about, you know what I mean, other, other things, like, you know, quarantine right now, but let's talk about, you know, the Umbrella situation, man. Well, first of all, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very heavy roster, as far as, not just like, you know, a bunch of people, but just as far as the talent, mm -hmm. it's a very heavy roster. You know, I got VVS Ken, um, this kid from Orlando, very, very talented kid. And um, I also got Mariah the Scientist, Melly, she's out of Harlem. You know, Mariah the Scientist is out of Atlanta. Um, kid that's really in the cut, and I haven't released him yet. His name is Mansa. I'm very, very excited about him. Like, I've always been, I've just, his talent is just unmatched, you know what I'm saying? A very special, special, special dude um, when it comes down to the singing and to that area and to the, just that melodic um, sounding type of music. Right. Um, also, you know, I have Davo. Davo is a kid. He's actually uh, he's a kid from Miami, but he's actually, um, you know, the lead guitarist in, in, in mm -hmm. Wailers in Bob Marley's band. He's, that's, that's, that's his father, Junior Marvin. So he comes from a long booted musical past and you know right. background and so I'm happy about him then of course Papi Yer. Papi Yer is a producer and also uh, an artist. You know, he made uh, Broken a Minute as far as that beat, uh, Jerry Sprunger, Take You Down, a lot of my biggest records um, of last year. Yes. And then... Um, Jay Springer was my, my, my shit. Thank you, I appreciate Crazy, that. Right. Thank Crazy. you, thank you, thank you. Crazy. Um, and, but yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm proud of everybody. Everybody's doing crazy things. You know, Melly, she just was just in the Beyonce Ivy Park commercial with the uh, with the, with her music with her, with her song Icy. It's just like a lot of different things that just happened. And I'm just I'm, I'm excited for the, the whole team. So, so you, you got about I think you named like four artists, four or five artists. Five, five, so five, it sounds it, to me it seems like um, remember how when Young Money started he had all. Would you do like a compilation album when you bring them? Or are you just for trying sure. to bring each artist out separately? For sure. My 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 biggest thing before a compilation is is building the artist. You know what I'm saying, and, and and you know, I've had my my share of of, of being ill treated when it's when it's another artist being the guy that's supposed to lead the the way. You know what I'm saying, and so I've always told myself to never ever be like that, and no matter what, build the brand of the artist. You know, um, I co-manage all of them if I don't fully manage them. You know what I'm saying when I, gotcha. when it comes down to each and every one of them. So like for me, <clears throat> um, everything that I do when I'm thinking about things in my management mind and my manager mind, and by the way, I manage myself as well. So when I think about things from my- Hold it. Yeah. You manage it, so that means if somebody wants to book Tory Lanez, they have to call you directly to get the date. No, no, I mean, there's people for that. Okay. I, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? That's the thing about it. It's like, I'm not one of those stupid artists. It's like, I'm gonna manage myself. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I just understand that it's about uh, outsourcing other people, and it's also about keeping a lot of things in-house. And the things that I do need that make uh, 
the objective and the obligation get done are paid people that are in-house. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So gotcha. it, it kind of eliminates all the things that a uh, so quote-unquote manager would need to do for you. You know what I'm saying? A, a manager is supposed to get you things, a good manager is supposed to get you things that you don't deserve. That's the difference between, mm. you know, a good manager and a great well, manager. Well, I call it homeboy management sometimes. I mean, homeboy sometimes. management is a little bit different. I'm just talking right. about, when we talk about the scale of managers mm -hmm. that are incredible managers, a manager is always, uh, a manager who's gonna go get you stuff, a good manager is gonna get you stuff, he's gonna get you opportunities, put you where you fit, get you the things that your name can get and what your worth can get. A great manager is gonna take you to places that you really shouldn't be at yet, mm -hmm. but right. you're there. A great manager is gonna do things that you really don't deserve, mm -hmm. but you're there. That's the difference, you know what I'm saying? And right. So for all of the artists, when they come to Umbrella, it's all about making sure that their brand is, is, is being seen in a light where it's like, wow, he doesn't really deserve that yet, but he's getting it. Right. And I don't know how, but I, right. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, that's what good managers do. Listen, kid from Toronto, did you ever envision yourself getting to the level of success that you are now? Like, I'm, I'm talking about, because, you know, I've seen a couple of old DVDs when he was battling. I was like, yo, look at the toy he battling. But did you ever envision yourself to now becoming president, CEO, owning your own label, you know, building a roster, building a whole team? Did you, did you think you were ever going to get to that point, like, from, from back then? This? This right here? Mm-hmm. This is nothing. This is nothing. So you just knew this that was it. This, this is nothing. This is not... This is the beginning of the foundation of what I'm going to start to do. This is nothing. This is, this is, this this is, is a blessing because God gave it to me. Right. And I'm happy and, I'm, and I rejoice in the blessings every single day. But mm -hmm. as far as this being like the success that I've worked in, in thousands of countless nights to attain, this isn't that success. This is, this is a cool, this is... It's cool. It's just the one. Where I'm headed, where I'm going. Mm -mm. It's, it's no stopping me. I'm, I'm, we're going to have this conversation again because I'm a real man. I'm always going to do your interview. We're going to have this conversation again from another time. We're going to be sitting in a palace. And we're going to be sitting in a palace. It's going to be acres in the yard. It's going to be 17 wild cars outside that I, I told you take three for you and your homeboys for the weekend. I didn't put gas be, in that. I don't know. But, I there's a nigga. I don't, there's I don't a, know what there's a nigga. Gas in that. There's a nigga at this time in my life. There's a nigga who just goes at nighttime, late at night, and just fills up all the cars with gas wherever they are. The car, cars got trackers. He just fills them up with gas. That's the level. I'm talking about. I'm 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 operating different. I'm a black mogul. You know what I'm saying? Beyond just talk music. Heavy, talk heavy. Talk Beyond heavy. just music. I'm not here. That's the difference. I think. People believe that just because my goal is to be the biggest artist in the world and because one day I will be the biggest artist in the world, that they think that just because that's that, that that's my overall goal. No, that's mm -hmm. the goal of Tory Lanez, the brand. Tory Lanez is just a brand. That's it. I'm Dave Star Peterson. <laughs> I got a whole bunch of other businesses and things I got to do over here. Things that I'm getting more money than music at times. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So here you got Tory Lanez who can operate and be this guy and da-da-da-da whenever Daystar Peterson is required to be Tory Lanez. But that's just that brand. And I plan on making that brand the biggest artist in the world. My water, umbrella water, I plan on making that bigger than Fiji, bigger than Smart Water, bigger than Essentia. Those are the people I'm trying to compete. I'm not going to have to compete with. I'm saying those are the people I'm going head to head against. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm talking about a different league of, of, of things, a different, a different echelon of, 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 of success. That's what I'm trying to attain. You know what I'm saying? Like, not just the Tory Lanez brand. That's great. But that's one thing. Mm -hmm. You know? I'm right. trying to be a million things. This is just a, a stepping stone to that's where it. you're really trying to get to. That's it. Got you, got you. So, 
I want to go back um, when you were fully independent, which you're fully independent again. But when you were independent, and this is before the Interscope deal, what was the most that you were ever offered before you took that deal? Like, like a deal you like, yo, like what would make you say, I don't know, man. I, I mean, not, um, I'm fighting to go to Interscope with this other label. You want to say the label, but what was the Honestly, most Honestly, it really wasn't about numbers. Okay. I never, I was smarter than that. You know, I, I didn't go in for numbers. I knew whatever number they was giving me, I was going to have to pay back. I never went in there for numbers. I was actually trying to go in for the lowest number and the best deal. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. Mm -hmm. I was already selling tickets. I was already selling hard tickets. I'm a hard ticket act. I'm not a, not a club act. I'm, like, I am a club act. If I go to the club, I'm going to sell it out. But I'm a hard ticket act. I'm a festival act. I'm a... I'm a touring act, you understand what I'm saying? In real venues. So when it comes down to uh, them offering me, you know, money at the place that I was already selling tickets and certain things, it wasn't about the money. It was just like, I just want the best deal. I want the most perks out the deal. I want the most everything. And, you know, when I signed my deal, I didn't sign for a lot of money. I just signed for good deal points. And that's why I was able to Faster than everybody else, I was able to do my five albums and get the fuck. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was able to get, you right. know what I'm saying? As right. long as my work ethic was there, I was able to do that and get out of there. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect to Interscope. I love them to death. It was cool, but, you know. You, so they didn't, did you feel at one point before you left, after you did your five, after you did your five albums, did you ever say, well, eh. Because I know you didn't jump into another situation. You didn't. And I'm pretty sure a lot of other majors was knocking yeah. on your door like da 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 it's still, And it still is. Don't let these people ever make you think that them dudes behind with your suits ain't on my phone. That's what, that's what I think there's a, a big misconception about me right now. Because uh, sometimes there's this weird, uh, what do they call it, like, there's people who think that like I'm actually being stopped from doing things. I'm not being stopped from mm -hmm. anything. But it's also just those people that you see on everyone's line, the big guy with the big da-da-da-da, those guys are still on my line. And they're more on my line now because of just me going forward and pushing forward and progressing. And just seeing me as an independent artist and all the things that I'm doing independently, no manager, no nothing, just Tory really out here, setting up shop, going crazy, also making sure that his artist is on. My, my hustle different. They know my hustle different. They know it's my temperature, my body is different. You know what I'm saying? They thermometer, my thermometer, shit hot. They should not. It's a different situation, you know? Different. Real. We got to talk about quarantine radio. Facts. Man, I think, I don't, well, first of all, I think, you and Little Bootsy get the awards for getting the most women to do whatever you wanted them to do. <laughs> you get the award. I'm telling y'all he gets the award. You know, I was just like, I was like, yo, I had to make sure I tried to, you know, hide the, the, the phone from my daughter because I thought she was going to have my daughter on there twerking. Nah, like, you nah, know what I'm nah, saying? Nah, nah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Putting milk on herself, all that. And I was like, yo, I'm going to kill this guy. <laughs> nah. But, but, um... Quarantine radio, man. Um, one thing I got to tell you is, man, um, I think um, between you and D Nice, I think during the um, whole pandemic, you know, especially in the beginning stages, you guys entertained the world with that. I mean, what, what he did, what he did, of course. But I'm saying, I'm putting you in the same, you know, in the same class because. Quarantine radio was just on everybody's radar. Everybody yeah. was tuned in. It was like uh, watching CNN. Definitely and not, for sure. It, it really was. It, it really was. Um, like you had a lot of big celebs on there. Sh shout out to Six Guy. You know, I, I, it was a light yeah, scoop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had like everybody it was, up in you know, there. <laughs> you had yeah, everybody had, in there. Had, it was a lot crazy. of people in there. And honestly, yeah. uh, shout out to D Nice too. You know, because the show uh, Quarantine Radio was originally inspired by D Nice. You know, I didn't. I didn't try to make it quarantine radio when I got on there. I was really just trying to sound clash. Like that was really how it started. It really 
kind of really started like versus to be honest with you we was getting other artists and we was just sound clashing but not with our own music with other music like i would call bryson tiller and be like all right sound clash i'm trying i'm i'm we we doing r&b you play an r&b song from the 90s i play an r&b song from the 90s and then we would do whatever whatever cases people started watching and shit like that and then the wild thing, one girl came on and was just like, fuck the sound class. She was just, she just started wilding and she just, I don't know, the liquor started getting involved and then I just started playing music and acting like I was a DJ. That was the whole reason. That's how I got the voice and everything. You I know, know I saying? thought she was coming from my job. I was a little hot with you a little bit. You know? <laughs> I'm like, this guy's trying lie, to come from my job. Of, I got a problem I, with that. I feel like in my time of being a radio host, which I was, I feel like from my own kind of way, I was a radio host. In my time of being a radio host, I can say that there is a lot of radio hosts that will never interview the niggas I interviewed. There's niggas who will never have those same type of people on their platform. Right. I had Raven Simone, Justin Bieber, Drake, you know what I'm saying? I had I had I had DMX come on in and growl. And I had T Pain come on in and sing with no auto tune. Like we had moments that were just like, wow, like that's crazy. I had Lizzo on there twerk, twerking on the, you know what I'm saying? I know, I know, on the bed, like, I know. Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Quarantine Radio, you know, but one thing about it that I, I, I've i always took to, to mind, and people always be like, yo, why don't you bring it back? Or why don't you? I never allowed Quarantine Radio to get untasteful or to, to be like, I'm tired of this. That's why in, in, in the times when I started slowing it down, we stopped doing it. Because I was just like, look, it had its moment and its time, but it's supposed mm-hmm. to live as quarantine. That was when we were all on real quarantine. And the only way we'd ever bring it back is if the world gets back to the first ever quarantine where you couldn't go outside and it's a nationwide thing. And it's a, you know, because that's what it was about. It was about bringing people joy where they had no choice. Like we really could not go outside at a point. Like, you know what I'm saying? And that was that was what the whole point of bringing it was, to, to bring positivity and joy and to entertain people and have people laugh instead of a time when family members was dying, niggas is losing jobs, things are going on. It's, 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 it's a, it was a lot going on, you know what I'm saying? So we just wanted to make something positive, and we now, did that. There, there, there was there was rumors that you were going to get a deal from quarantine, like you were going to take it and I don't know. Nah, there was, everybody hit me up about the VH1, MTV, a lot of people hit me up about it, but it it just, for me, it was like, first of all, there's no way to take this format and and do that format live on television. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, the whole point of this is it's not scripted, number one. It's organically not scripted, number two. It's also the the way it's is is just formatted. It's about like touching real people in real moments, like at that moment. Like you're not just stage ready and ready to do this and da 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 da. Nah, it's like we called you. Your hair could be messed up to the side or da 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 da. Like it was real organic, and you know I just didn't feel like I would be able to have those elements by trying to turn it into a show. So I never sold it out like that. I just liked the idea for being as tasteful as it was. I never. I don't care about the money and the, and the, I, I'm gonna get mine. I'm gonna have a thousand shows on MTV and VH1 when the time is right. You understand what I'm saying? But for me, it's about the brand of things. You'll always remember Quarantine Radio. You'll always remember how I held you down in that time. Always, because so, I did that. So, with it being so entertaining, um, you're saying the only way you would bring it back if. If we had another something similar to a pandemic, hopefully we won't. No, no, that. not a pandemic, but just some reason why the world has to quarantine again, like actual quarantine, like how we did at the start. That'd be the only way we we brought it back, and be no other reason to. But you know, late, low key, like on a late night, you can sometimes catch this thing called the shush hour. The shush hour. <laughs> you gonna leave it at that? Like, what the? We, we go, yo, yo, nah, because if you know, you know. You know what I'm saying? If you know, you know. I'm, I'm just saying, but, 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 but I mean, I'm like saying, this. suppose they don't know. They want they want to know. It's you not mean? supposed to go wake grandma up. It's not, you know, it ain't that's, that's look, it. it ain't, you know, it's it's one of those things. But you know, that's that's the closest thing you'll ever get to anything like that. And that's very random. We don't even tell people about you that. You know what's so. crazy? 
about quarantine right now. I don't, I don't want to stay on this too long. I think if I'm if I'm correct, I remember. I think they took took your page away from you for I think yeah. a couple days or whatever. And then I, I, I mean, the owner I, of, of Instagram I was great to say you, you pulled your juice card. You, you, you pulled your juice card. You had the owner, the actual owner of Instagram, come on and say you know he was going to bring it back, and you you guys were on there. Um, what was the real reason why he took it off? Like, what was it? Was it nah, complaints? It, what it wasn't was it? him. First of all, it wasn't him. He was never hating. He actually said that he loved he loved the, the show. Okay. Um, what it was was just it was this girl mm -hmm. um, who had this 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 big gummy worm that was just very suggestive, and I think the amount of inches that she had lodged it in her throat. It's a little, it's a little too much for the, it's a little too graphic for everybody. Mm, okay. Yeah. And that's what it was. That, that's what it was. And did you and the owner, did y'all have a conversation prior to y'all going on the air with it? I mean, on back on Instagram or? Nah. Um, I think he ended up talking to the shade room about it or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember he. From what I remember, I think me and him spoke in a DM like very briefly, but it was him and them, them from Instagram and my manager, which is my manager at the time, was talking mm. back and forth. Yeah. So you, you've done all of these things. Um, my thing is to you, somebody told me you had an OnlyFans page. Now, I, no. I, 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 what they seen radio mm -hmm. at night. At night. After dark. We After had an OnlyFans page for Quarantine Radio. Okay. I've never ever been in any is it, is it, pictures. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say, if you did. I was gonna say if you did. I, I wasn't gonna go on there. I wasn't gonna look. I'm, I'm chilling yeah. now. It's, it's a bit too much. <laughs> That's <laughs> not me. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not. I don't know. For me personally, that's why I never, even with the quarantine uh, after dark, we never actually kept it, kept it super going because for me, it's just a certain level of like nasty. I'm not trying to go with the world. Like, it's like, you know what I'm saying? When shit start feeling too like we got to go do something lustful for something to, that goes against my morals. And I don't believe in that. I don't believe in taking my shirt off and taking sexy pictures and going like this in the mirror with my my boxes half off, like, what the fuck? You know, I was just, I, but you know, a lot of artists was doing it. I'm talking about, that's them. I was surprised. Shout that's out to them. Casanova, that's my guy. A lot Cash of Nova artists are followers. But that's, eh. There's nothing wrong with you doing the OnlyFans if that's what you want to do in your life. I'm mm -hmm. not over here casting judgment. I'm not a judge. I'm just, I just, me personally, my own pictures being on OnlyFans and my own videos of me and girls, I'm not gonna, that's not me. You know, you know but I, I guess some it's artists feel like, you know, it's um, income that they... That's what they needed. Niggas was broke during this pandemic. Niggas lost a lot of money. Niggas, it was hard for a lot of niggas. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It was hard for a lot of niggas. Not me, <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't gonna lie. Through the pandemic, I was blessed. You was blessed. I was blessed. I was blessed. I was blessed. Now, did, did the changing, did the spending habits change a little bit? No, nah, because for me, I never. It, it it was never like I never had to just go out and. I don't live jug to jug. Like I'm not a guy. I'm not an artist who lives like I'm financially very stable. I'm not one of those people who and. and you know, I invest a lot, and I'm a person that, in different times, it doesn't matter what's going on. I'm, I'm a hustler. I'm gonna find my way to make other avenues and revenues and money. It doesn't really, it never affected me at all. Yo, I gotta ask you this, man. Who put that nasty ass picture of you on the basketball court? Up? <laughs> who put that picture up? I <laughs> honestly don't know. Who you put know, that Because I, I mean. I don't recall my hair looking that crazy. My shit sometimes can look crazy. I was going through a very creative process of niggas trying to keep my hair growing and shit. But I guess the person who got it just got it. I mean, sometimes you have a good hair day, sometimes you got a bad one. Niggas, sometimes my hair look crazy. So, so you don't know who put it up? You, you just... Nah, I don't, I'm not going to go look into the photographer. Like, when I saw it, I was like, 
Ah, niggas call me sis. <laughs> she got my hair cut the next day. I was blessed, nigga. What the fuck? Why? <laughs> it was never that deep to me, dog. I laughed at it a couple times, see the memes. I laughed while I was taking this shit. I kept it pushing. I think niggas, the problem with, with a lot of artists is like, they're not, they're not able to laugh at themselves anymore. Like, you're not able to joke with the rest of the world. Like, it's a fucking joke. It's like niggas cracking on you in cafeteria. What you gonna go back and be like, well, the reason why my. <laughs> like, nah, nigga. Right. You know what I'm saying? This life, nigga. There's been thousands of times niggas catch. Nigga, I have fucking bald spots sometimes, niggas. Or lighter spots, I should say. But the funny. This is, this is the thing. <laughs> why it seems like everybody tries to make the bit of, the bit of you is your hairline or your bald spot. I mean, why I, is that? I don't know how many times the same joke is gonna be funny, but it's. It's it's kind of funny. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. It's kind of funny. Like you gotta laugh with niggas when it's funny. It's kind of funny, bro. I mean, if I see another nigga slip it, I'm gonna laugh. So it's like at the end of the day, you call me on a bad hair day. You know, I feel like um, you definitely kind of well, you definitely live up to it. Cause I'm gonna bring up a moment sure. that shocked me uh, with you that because I, I pay attention. So I'm gonna take you back a little bit. The um, uh, Dream Doll disc record. When she did the record, I guess to you, you know Next what I'm question. talking about. She gets no cloud over there. Right, but. Next question. Okay, cool. All right, we're gonna make sure we cut that out. My bad. Now nah, you can keep that part in it. You gotta just get the next question. Uh, okay. She gets no cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it in there, okay? Yo, this thing is Nah, I'm just playing. Ask your question. It's cool, but nah, nah, I was, nah. What I was gonna say? Nah, nah. Next question. Next question. We can leave it alone. We can leave it alone. Um, but so my thing is, what is the what from the young Tory? To the Tory now, what is the difference from a young Tory Lanes to the Tory Lanes of now? What's the difference? Um, I think I had a blinder ambition when I was younger. I just wanted to get it. Everything was just about getting it now. I think um, I'm, I'm far more level-headed when it comes down to things. Um, even when I was a kid, I felt like I was a little bit more angry at things that were going on in my life. You know, my mom dying and at an early age and certain things I didn't understand and didn't know how to cope with. I felt like I had a lot of built up anger. A lot of things made me angry. Um, but I feel like over a period of time, I've, 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 I've leveled myself out and I'm a far better person just mentally, physically. You know, I've been taking care of my mind and my mind state more. You know, when I was a kid, I just run around crazy or just running around just with however I felt about whatever. However I woke up that day was my mood. Now I know how to control the mood. Now I know how to control, you know, the times when people say things to me that I don't like that normally I would snap on. Now I know how to keep myself calm and keep myself collected and never let nobody emotionally hijack me. So we're in the state of not touring. We're in the state of people can't touch you as they used to. Uh, We're trying to get back to that. You know what I mean? Of course that. Um, are we going out with a tour? And if we're going out with a tour, is it going to be an umbrella tour? Or is it going to... Most What's definitely. Um, I would love to do the umbrella tour, especially right now, now that everybody has an equal something of a fan base. Um, I think it would be very dope just for us all to have something like that. Um, of course, you know, until that comes, we're, we're going to continue to just have just different and creative, tasteful ways that we could always make sure our consumers and our umbrellas, um, when they're watching, when all the other umbrellas are watching, when I say umbrellas, I'm talking about just our fan bases. When the umbrellas are watching us, we give them a uh, uh, better look into whatever it is that we're doing. And, uh, and it's always cinematic, it's always high quality. And so, you know, until touring does come back, we'll do our best to give them as real of an experience as we can. So. Yeah, regardless, we all performing, we all doing different things, live streaming, certain things like that. So, yeah. Last thing, what is the process for those who um, are watching this? 
what is the process to get into Umbrella? Like, what do you look for in an artist? What is it? Like, what, what characteristics do they have to have for you to sign them to Umbrella? Um, really, it's like, um, I'm a quality person, but I'm a, I look for artists that are competing with themselves every single time they drop, they want to get better. I'm not into stagnant artists. I'm not into homeboy artists. I'm not into the, the, that's my dog, so that's my art. I'm not into that. I'm into finding special people. And if I found you, I promise you're, you're going to be special. If I feel it, you're going to be special. And if I don't feel it, you might still be special. With I might not see it. Not everybody has the power of foreseeing how someone is going to be or who they're going to become. Mm -hmm. But I think I have a really good scope when it comes down to talent and nurturing talent. And, you know, just as an artist going through all the things that I can go through and that I've gone through the ups and downs, I'm in a position where I can lead them through, uh, you know, things that they're going to be dealing with that they may not know how to deal with things that they may find so super major in their small world at that moment, they may not realize that on the major scale, these things don't matter. I'm there to make sure that I nurture the artist also and make sure that I'm caring about the brand from the foundation. You know, it, it, it's easy to pop artists when they're already popping. It's easy to do all the things you need to do when someone, because they have notoriety, there's a reason for them to be there. It's the hustle that goes into getting them from nothing. Everyone here came from nothing. Everyone, VVS Ken just got verified today. Today, three hours before you came in. Shit came out of nowhere. Everyone, he came down from zero followers. Everyone came from nothing. Everyone. So it's like to get them there, to get people to actually start caring where they can now start building a fan base, that's the magic. That's the magic. It's easy when they're already there. Mm -hmm. Getting them, getting a nigga to care about some shit he doesn't care about is the hard part. And I bust my ass to nurture, to brand, and to make sure that the artist is always taken care of and their best interest is always at hand whenever they're doing something. And together, as one umbrella, we succeed. Have you ever, ever, been in a booth and somebody laid something and you felt like you had to redo, redo your verse? Mm, yeah, maybe. Maybe a couple of times, definitely. Actually, matter of fact, yeah, for sure. I just didn't want to be inaccurate. But yeah, like, I definitely think there's been moments where I, but not for the reason that you may think. Okay. I'm a vibe guy, right? It came to a point where, and there was a point in my life where everything was just about being better than killing somebody on a song. And at those moments, no one ever had a better verse than me. Because I just was trying to spit and da Until I started realizing music is about moments. It's not just about every single piece of You gotta know when to use that. But you also gotta know when the moments are. How many moments you got in your verse that they are gonna sing in this club? How many moments is the, how many times will a beat cut out and everyone's gonna say your lyric? How many moments you got in your verse, my nigga? Sometimes I just didn't have enough moments. <laughs> That's it. It's like, I need some more moments. You know, a lot, because a, a lot of guys, they say, you know, I've heard, you know, artists I've interviewed, they're like, yo, you know, I never, nah, I ain't nobody, I never went to, did a song and, re, re, you know, rewrote my verse. I always felt like, you know, I did whatever. And, I hear from other artists like, no, that's not true. Every every artist that goes into the booth with somebody, um, if they lay a verse, their verse might be better, and they may say, look, you know what, I got to well, If I'm coming to kill you, you're done. It's over. It's over. It's done. Like, I don't care who's on the song. I'm coming to kill you, it's done. Like, it's, like, when it comes down to music, and it comes down to, if I really, if especially if I'm just like, you know what, I really want to done you off, like, yo, it's, you're done? I'm gonna put the pen to the paper. Like, I'll kill you without the pen to the paper when it comes to this music shit. Like, like for real, like, and I want you to understand what I'm saying here, like, spiritually, just like Wayne says, spiritually, I'm, I'm a regular person, we all normal people, physically, normal person, emotionally, normal person. 
Musically, I'm coming to kill you, nigga. Like, that's, that's what my mindset is. But then, like I said, when my mindset is not just that, and it's like, let me focus on the moment, I'm more focused on how the overall song sounds, how the things come off in my moments. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, if I'm coming to kill you on a song, you're done. I'm not laying, I'm not going to have to lay my verse down. You're going to have to lay your verse down a couple times. And when you do, it's still not going to be better. Because that's what I'm coming in with. Like, you know, if you, and a lot of times, the thing about artists is like, they get that part of me a little confused and they think it's like a cocky thing. It's not. It's just that I'm challenging myself. Like, I'm challenging myself to write something that I couldn't write a better verse than. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is serious. So if you write a better verse than me at that point, then yeah, you want some shit patch, and I'm the original patch head, nigga. <laughs> Tory Lane's top five. Exactly. No, no, no. Yeah. No, that's it. You said it. Tory Lanez, my whole top five. <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> so, like, Yo. <laughs> Yo. Stuck. Shot the player. What's up? Um, you know, and you know that question always comes up all the time. Like, all right, you know, and like your top five definitely probably be different than my top five, or different than. My son's top five, or my cousin's top five, whatever. I ain't gonna lie, um, I like my whole, I like the whole umbrella roster for my top five. I'm, I ain't gonna hold you. Melly, VVS, Ken, Davo, Papier, Mariah, Mansa. There's six of them, but you know what I'm saying? I, I bet the bank, and they're just the artists that I actually listen to. Like I listen to VVS, Ken more than any other rappers right now. I listen. Not, not even being funny. Now listen, you gotta watch that. You wanna know why? Watch what? No, 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 no I'm saying. When you when you put that label up like that, follow me. That's my top five. No, 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 I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna break something down for you. I'm gonna, down for you. I'm gonna take you back. Remember when um, Jay Z took Rockefeller, you know, took Beans, Freeway, uh, State Property up to Hot 97, and they was you know they was freestyling. They was like Jay, like you know, we got the hottest, you know, hottest niggas in town. Yada yada yada. So then that night. They went to the studio, mm -hmm. you know, Swiss got in touch with Jay or whatever, and then they came in the studio and mm -hmm. Cassidy and Freeway. I that. Battle. So when you put that person on that pedestal, people may come at you like, oh, so you think your guy or your girl is the top person? All right, well, listen, let's meet up. Let's see if your, if your artist is better than that artist. Well, times are a little different. I'm, I'm not sure how many artists are going to go back to the studio and have that moment where one artist could be like, put a beat on. It's, it, it's a little bit of a different time. But I will say this. We're talking about the style of artists. There's, there's different style of artists. Do mm -hmm. I feel like there's another girl right now that can rap better and more sicker in Spanish and, 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 and sing mel melodically as good as Melly? in English and still rap like Melly in English and do all those things and no, I don't feel like there's anybody better than her in that lane. I don't feel like there's someone who can go head to head with her in that lane. I don't, like, I, I personally don't. Listen, man, Tori, thank you, man, for your time, man. I'm glad, you know, you invited me into the palace. <laughs> no, you this know. ain't the palace yet. This man. is the palace, this is the palace, this you know what I mean? This is the radio, pit, pit, pit. <laughs> Make sure, man, y'all go ahead and get you know, the single on all digital platforms, sure. which, by the way, I'm, I'm going to tell you, man, um, the ladies in Philly, you know, they, they, they love they love that joint. Oh, thank you. No, they definitely that's love right. it, man. You know, and that's the one thing. It's, now, that, it's, that, you know, Chris Brown and Tory Lanez on the same record, it's a certain thing with the voices automatically is, is going to be ear candy. You know what I'm saying? So, like, when I put that one out, though, and, like, when I, when I, when I, I just heard it, I just knew it. I was like, this feels record. I'm like, this is, this is it. Called it feels. I just was just like, it's solid. It's set to go. I didn't even put no bridge on it, no nothing. Like, but that's the real classic way of R and B. You know what I'm saying? The hook keeps going. Uh, 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 more than eight bars. It's, 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 you know, that's the classic right. way to hear R and B. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just wanted you to vibe and have a good. Yeah, I think vibe, we're missing bro. that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, man. In the game. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to bring that feeling back. Like, you know, real smooth, real, real clean, bro. You know. You, you know this is the come up show, right? Of course. No. My man's is here. 
My man's is here for all of that. All of that shit you asking is here? for. My man's is here. Your man's is here? The VVS Ken is here. Is he sure? I mean, is he... Is, He's here. He, you sure he ready for that? I mean, if he's man's scared, is, he got to get a dog. I mean, where's Ken at? Ken in the studio room. We can get it. Let's do it. You sure? Do you want to ask him yourself? I mean, I think my man's is ready. Kels, I mean, Kels, he ready, right? He said he ready. Alright, we might, you know, we gonna let you do the honors too when he, you know, when he do what he do. For sure. Might get, might get a little cameo from you, or something, a little, you know, one like two bars or something, you know. <laughs> Not for sure. I got you know, a little two bars, you know what I'm saying? But you know what it is. It's the come up show, man. It's nine nine.